Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. A house divided against itself. I know I talked to you guys about this not long ago, but uh, I have got to come back to this subject because I think I may have gotten some insight that's going to take us deeper. Um, well, maybe even more, maybe correct what I've spoken about before. Uh, so we're going to talk about this today, looking at this scripturally, and uh, I, I, I don't even know how I got into it. Oh, I know, I, there was a reason why I saw, somebody had mentioned a house divided against itself, and it kind of caught my attention, and as I was listening to this one video, I went back and I looked at it again, and I really began to understand what Jesus was saying to us about a house divided against itself. So, without any further ado, uh, it's not a family, by the way, hmm. as the picture might imply, and as many other uh, scenarios out there show you, it seems to imply almost as if it's a family, uh, but that's really not what the case is. And we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 12 from the Hebrew Matthew, as well as from the King James Version. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at Isaiah 42, and you'll see how that really kind of all coincides together, concluding up with Matthew chapter 23, about your house is left desolate. Well, that ought to be the clue right there. Your house is left unto you desolate. And he is literally talking about their own house and if you remember i actually let me just kind of i'll pull that up for you real fast as well uh, i think it's worth mentioning because in matthew chapter 23 in the hebrew matthew those of you that recall we talked about that before and i shared with you how that he was talking about not a house of multitudes but as a house of singular um, because in Hebrew it is a singular. So let me let's pull that back up once again. And we'll go over here to that last part where he says to them, um, therefore you will leave your houses desolate. All right, and then we go to 38 right there. Um, okay. And he, literally, he's talking to them, and that they leave their houses, and their, their houses will be desolate. So it's individuals. It's individuals is what we have there, and I found that very fascinating, and I think I shared that with you guys once before. Let's go, though. Let's go back, though, from the very beginning here. Let's take a look at what we're reading here and uh and actually i'll use matthew the the king james to start with behold my servant whom i have chosen my beloved and whom my soul is well pleased i will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the gentiles now that was the scripture that jesus was fulfilling from isaiah 42 he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the, in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, a smoking flax shall he not quench till he send forth judgment unto victory. In his name shall be, and, his, and excuse me, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought into him one possessed with a, possessed with a devil. Watch carefully now. Blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Now he takes and he shows you from the outside perspective what happens in a kingdom. In other words, if the people are divided within the kingdom, then the kingdom falls. But then he breaks it all the way down to that house being divided. 
And he shows you that if that house is divided, it shall not stand. He said, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. All right. Now that's just kind of sharing that with you. Now I want to take you to the Hebrew Matthew and take a peek at this as well. And we'll start right here, verse 25. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them in a parable, Every kingdom among you divided shall be made desolate. And so every city or house upon which division shall fall shall not stand. Now I thought that was interesting. I'm just now seeing something here I want to share with you. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in a parable, Every kingdom among you divided shall be made desolate. That's, that's a prophecy. Every kingdom among you. In other words, wherever they go and they're, they're, they are there, that kingdom is going to be made desolate. That's why Europe fell. That's why the United States will fall. Everywhere they have gone, the Pharisees, that is, they have brought division. And the kingdoms have fell as a result. Russia fell. Europe, everything. And it's so true, right? So every city or house upon which division shall fall shall not stand. Now we're looking at a spiritual application that goes beyond that of the physical realm. If Satan cast out another Satan, there will be division among them. How will his kingdom stand? Wow. That's what caught my attention right there. If Satan cast out another Satan, there will be division among them. How will his kingdom stand? They're accusing him that he is a devil. So what Jesus is clearly defining for you here is he's casting out an evil spirit of a person. Why? Because in that person, if that evil spirit is in that person, that person is going to fall. Or he may die physically, whatever the case may be. And so he's showing you that if Satan cast out Satan, his kingdom would fall. He's showing you that, that, that the house is the individual. And as long as Satan has his demonic entities within that person, he has a kingdom established on this earth in a spiritual realm. He said, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, therefore will, they will be your judges. You see, the children of Israel at that time couldn't cast out an evil spirit out of anyone. And the reason they could not is because they were not of the Father's kingdom. That's what Jesus is showing you. They couldn't cast out an evil spirit because they would be divided in the kingdom, showing that they themselves were possessed of devils. That's what he's trying to show you. You know, yeah, the person that he cast the sickness out of was only sick. He was deaf, dumb, and blind. You know, the evil spirit had a hold of him. And the spirit had a hold of them as well. The evil spirit, the only difference was they were deaf, dumb, and blind spiritually. But they couldn't heal the boy that was sick because they had the same demonic entities upon them. And if they were to cast out the evil spirit, then the kingdom would be divided. You understand now? 
But he says, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, truly the end of his kingdom has come. Wow. But if you'll notice, the end of his kingdom is Satan reigning and ruling in you. Because the end of his kingdom was in that individual that he cast that evil spirit out of. That's where the end of the kingdom came. Jesus said, I give you power that you can tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions. We rule and reign with Jesus Christ right now in what? In heavenly places. Why does it say heavenly places? Because within you, in your house, that is where the heavenly place is. Once you get control, once you begin to be able to rule and reign, and you're not allowing your mind to be divided, you're not allowing your head to tell you one thing, your heart to tell you another thing, but you cast Satan out, and now Christ reigns within you, and you become a singularity of belief and faith in Christ Jesus. Now you have no longer, you no longer are in a divided house. See, the guy that he cast the spirit out of, he was physically blind and he was deaf and he was a dumb mute. That's how deep embedded Satan was. But the Pharisees and Sadducees were blind as well. They even, they, you know, they, in one place in the scripture they talk about, you know, why can't we do this? Jesus says, if the blind, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch, right? Remember that scripture? He tells them also, he said, if you, what was it? Um, oh gosh, I forget the one where it goes in there. He's talking, I, I know the scripture, but he's talking about, um, oh goodness. If you, if, if, if you were, if you were not, if you, if you were blind, you, your sin would not remain. But because you say you see, your sin remains. Do, let, let me, let me, let me, let's see if we can find that real quick. Blind, see, remains. Let's just see if that'll pull it up. No, it didn't do it like that. Um, sin remains. Let's see. See, there's, oh gosh, where's, let me do it like that. Sin remains. I wasn't like that. Hang on. Oh, you'd have no sin. Have no. That's what it was. That's what Jesus said to them. There's sin. Let's see. Have no sin. Let's see. Jesus said to them, if you, yeah, here it is right here. John 9, 41. There it is. Let me see if I make it big enough so you guys see it good. All right, it was 941. Jesus, all right, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Wait a minute, let me back up. Let's see. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, For, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Hmm. They claimed they could see, but yet they were, a live, they were groping in darkness as it were. Right Now let's go back to the scripture here again. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, why do your sons not cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, truly the end of his kingdom has come. How shall a man be able to enter in the house of the strong man and take his good unless he be, be bind, unless he, unless he bind him first? Then shall plunder his house. See, that's what Satan has done. Satan has come, is, is so 
indwelled in human beings and he has bound them spiritually to who they are. And once he's got you bound spiritually, he can plunder every good thing that there was meant for you to have from God in the first place. That's the, that's the sad part. Whoever is not with me is against me, he says. Whoever does not join himself to me denies me. Therefore I say to you that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven. The son of, sons of men and blasphemy of the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. All right. Let me, let me take you, though. As, as, you know, the scripture says over here earlier when we were reading in Matthew 18 that, that these were things that were fulfilled about him. And there was something in Isaiah 42 that I saw I wanted to share with you as well. Because this is where it comes from. Um, Thus saith God the Lord, he created the heavens and stretched them forth. He that spread forth the earth and that which come out of it. He that give breath unto the people upon it. Nishma la'am aliyah. See, natan. Natan means to give. Natan nishma. Nishma la'am. Okay, he, he gave the breath to the people aliyah that were upon that. That's when he breathed in the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. The ruach and the spirit. La halachim ba. The, uh, for those that are walking upon, upon the earth as well. And I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and have taken hold of thy hand and kept you and set you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the nations. Now watch what he says. To open the blind eyes, to bring out, of the, prisoner, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Do you know what he's talking about? He's talking about your own body. Okay? He's talking about the prison house is your body. So he came there to open your eyes so that he could bring the prisoners from the dungeon. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Your body became that prison house that you got locked up into. And when Christ cast out the devil, now the house is no longer divided. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. I am the Lord that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. There could be so much said on that right there, but I'm going to save that for another day, and we'll kind of hold up on that. Let's say it in closing, though. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stones them which are sent unto you, how often I would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left de house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, that you shall say, Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Their houses, their bodies were desolate without the Holy Spirit because they were divided. They were still groping in darkness. He came to his own and his own received him not. How sad that was. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope this is a blessing to you. And uh, if you want to support the broadcast, we greatly appreciate it. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, right there above my head there. Uh, you, can, you can donate right there online if, if God lays that upon your heart. Or you can buy mail, the Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. We greatly appreciate it. And by the way, we had a lot of nice comments made about the, uh, the interview with uh, Mia and Richard Finnegan. Uh, but there's some people that were like, you know, why have you made such a long infomercial on here? Listen. This is such an amazing thing that we have found with this life wave. Uh, to me, it is newsworthy. And when you, if you have just hear the wave of testimonies from friends that are using this, uh, we had an 80 year old couple last night sharing their testimony, uh, how that they had gotten their life back. This man been in pain all these years. He said, now I'm not in pain. Uh, my aunt, who has been suffering with dementia, getting her life back. Um, 
Listen, it is truly, in my opinion, it is newsworthy. Uh, I may some people may not agree with that, and that's okay. Everyone has that right to do so, you know. But I would never share something with you that I didn't believe in with all my heart. That it is something that is truly helping humanity, and that's why I share it so passionately the way I do. So it's up to you if you want to uh, to try that, but uh, just keep that in mind. I didn't. I don't post that just to do it, you know. EMP Shield. We've we've believed in that from day one, and and you may not ever have to have it, but it's like an insurance EMP Shield is. If we ever were to have some type of, because uh, we know wars are coming and things like that, but if we ever had a uh, electromagnetic pulse, you know, I believed in it that strongly, and that's why I shared that with you. You know, but you don't benefit from that other than the fact that you got the product, you know. And this is something as well that I have seen in my own family, uh, lives transformed. And a very dear friend recently, lives transformed, you know, and non-transdermal. Nothing is going into your body, you know. So, so just keep that in mind. It's not, I'm not, I don't do things just to do them. You guys should know that, especially those that have criticized, you know. I have, many years, I've had many opportunities to promote products. I never would do it, never believed in it. Not to say that some things were not good. I just didn't believe in that. But this here, I've seen too many wonderful things. And I waited a long time before I said anything as well. But anyway... God bless you. Thank you for listening. I hope today's message blessed your heart and you have a great day.